All right. Welcome back to season three of the Real Life Trading Pivot Podcast. There's a, a new host. I don't know if you guys ever heard of her. She's brand new to the uh she's back, is what I'm trying to say. She's back. We got Tracy Ball in the house. Tracy, how have you been? Oh, Dan, I've missed you. I've miss missed you. you. Yeah. Miss so you we too. are back in honest, the house together. To be honest, when I talk to Dean, I imagine he's got blonde hair, long too. So it's, it's <laughs> I try to it's like you never left. It's like you never left. But uh, uh we are, there you go. We are back for 2023. Uh, every single week in the All Access Pass, we'll be recording this, so we are going to have live interaction from some of the guests posting comments. Uh, if you guys are listening to this in uh, post-recording, you guys won't see the comments, but we'll try to repeat any questions and uh, try to keep everybody in the loop up to date. So I hope that works out well, but I'm excited for the participation. It's another little element to the Pivot Podcast. And uh, Tracy, first episode, Fundamentals of Trading, Introduction for New Traders. How do you feel about that, Tracy? I think it's a great place to start. I mean, we're into a brand new year. Why not start with a brand new basic level? Like if you've never heard of trading before, if you're if you're kind of just teasing yourself with it, if you're romantic about it, but you don't know anything about it, then this episode's for you because we're going to dive right into the, like I'm talking basics, like what is trading? Dan, yep. well, what is it? Before we, before we even get to that, I would also add to that too. If- okay. If somebody's been trading even for a while, but struggling, mm -hmm. um, it's weird how the calendar date makes a difference in people's lives. So you're going from December 31st and January 1st, and now all the hope comes in. And how, what did I do wrong? I mean, honestly, everybody should be deep, deep diving into themselves every day and just try to figure out how could I do something 1% better than I did yesterday. And if you just take that aspect and approach. So if you guys are, if somebody's out there listening, they're struggling, they want to uh, be able to really pick themselves up and just kind of refocus themselves going through things like this, um, whether it's listening to the pivot podcast, listen to a numerous amount of other podcasts out there. Jeremy and Brittany have one too. Um, there's a, a bunch, not even in real life trading. There's a ton of YouTube videos, relearning strategies, re uh, going through back trading. All that stuff is extremely important for trying to understand how to, to kind of even reset. So I, I would say it's more for, for, um, all those aspects, but you asked the question, what is, uh, what is trading? Mm -hmm. What is it? What does it mean? I wish I knew. I wish I knew. <laughs> um, not, uh, well, trading, trading is um, in the purest form. Yeah. You want something that I have and I have something that you want. Right. And we come to some kind of agreement, some kind of, uh, mutual understanding. We're able to swap items. Right. And if we're taking that into the stock world into the finance world it, it's we're trading stocks right and what we're trying to agree on is specifically price if you have something that i value at a dollar and you're trying to sell it to me for 10 there's probably not going to be a deal unless we meet somewhere in the middle or, or uh you sweeten a deal somehow or make it make sense to me or you know walk from the table and i do think that walking from the table on a lot of things for traders is very difficult concept to to kind of understand which is weird because they'll do it in real life with real material items they could hold right but seeing a price and trying to trying to catch a a breakout somewhere or even for long-term investing we saw it a lot in 2020 when the market was going crazy valuations were absolutely out of control and people are like no i'm still buying a bunch of stuff i love stocks because it, it was going up mm -hmm. right and then you're holding and all of a sudden it's plummeting you're down 70 80 percent on some of those positions because you got you got sold into the hype trade yeah, and that seventy or eighty percent decline in a lot of those stocks has actually brought them back to earth. So yes, <laughs> they're so about where they should be. <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Different topic for different day. I think we're still some some things are are getting very close. Yeah. Some things are really far away still. I, I think yeah. we still have a, a little bit more ways, but different topic. Um, so so in the uh, yeah. stock market, what are some of those instruments that you are able to trade? What are some of the things that that a trader would have access to? So that's a great question because you mentioned stocks already. But there are numerous other instruments, including, you know, futures, Forex, bonds, uh, you know, stocks, crypto. There's a multitude of different opportunities and they all have their pros and cons. And we'll get into that in further episodes down the line of um, more details into futures, more details into Forex, all that kind of thing and, and that. But the point is, is that trading for... The financial purposes is an opportunity for you to invest in something, make a gain, and profit from that. And uh, 
that's the cool thing about it. So we, everyone that's here and everyone that is joining our podcast are more likely interested in either becoming a day trader or a swing trader. And that is more specific to kind of what you do with a group of money or an amount of money where you invest in something and your goal is to make the the dollar, right? That's the goal. So yeah. Do you have anything to add to that? Fun fact on the basics of trading, because uh, <laughs> I was born in Long Island. So I don't know if you guys knew, but Long Island was traded for 21 beads from the Native you, Americans. Really? Or, yeah, like 20, just 21 beads. Like, here you go. Now I got Long Island. Pretty crazy. But now that was a heck of a trade. Uh, that is it. That's a that's how you find good value. And then you just turn it into a mall. The entire exactly. thing is just a mall at this point, yeah. which is fantastic, too. Now, but, y- you focus on stocks. Is there anything else that you trade? Uh. Me, I, I used, I mean, crypto, I, I traded not so much anymore. Um, I never really got into the whole crypto space the same way I would have got into to other things. I dabbled in it. There were some charts I liked. I would take some, some trades, primarily Bitcoin, Ethereum, things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the small things that didn't make any sense. It was just wild to me that like people were paying money for something to say, I just couldn't even wrap my my small little brain around any of that but um some of the big things okay this i, I can see some value if it's going to work that's where I, that's the field that i want to be in um otherwise i used to trade futures i still trade futures on occasion just not as much um and then forex i would there was a time where i was trading forex pretty heavily but i was also trading stocks at the same time so for you guys that are not familiar with forex as opposed to the stock market, Forex is really 24 hours a day. Market is closed. Uh, it is closed. really, really 24-7, uh, kind of. And then you you have the stock market during the day. So the one thing I found is mainly we get into trading so that we could free up time and, and free up um, really the availability to do things that you wouldn't ha- have from a nine-to-five job. And I was definitely getting into a, to a camp where I was trading stocks from – pretty much market open to market close. And then right after that, eat something quick. Then I was trading Forex and I was like, I'm not sleeping. I'm not, I'm boggling myself down. And then it just became a little like a cycle. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't want to be in. So eventually I said, you know what? I like stocks better than, than I like Forex and kind of refocused. There you go. I've gone from stocks. Oh, well, I went from futures to stocks back to futures. So I am now trading futures okay. pretty much exclusively except for swing trading. I am swing trading stocks, obviously, but uh, no, that's, that's very cool. All right. So trading is the act of actually, let's just talk about how does, does somebody get started in trading? What would be the first thing that they'd have to do? Um, I, I think the first, first thing with any new thing that you do is learn what you were doing, right? Mm-hmm. So the, the, the first question that you asked, like, what is trading? Start there. Yep. Right? Start, start at the basics. Don't, don't go to YouTube, figure out, type in best trading strategy. <laughs> you have one trading strategy and you're like, okay, every time this happens, this is what I'm doing. And you don't even know, you don't understand what a stock is. Yeah. yeah. Right. Under, understand that the stock actually has value to it. Right. If I was to, to buy a stock and, and hold it, if I'm buying it at a good price and I'm not buying it overinflated, they can in the future make you, without trading it, without selling it, it, it has value that it, in a way, not directly, but in a way should relate similar to what the actual company value is, mm-hmm. right? And we see in the stock market that a company grows maybe 5% a year, 6% a year, and you're going to find on both ends of it, there's the overextension of people want it too much and they're paying overpaying for the stock. And then you get the deflation like we're, we're having now, or at least deflated spirits in the stock market and nobody wants to hold anything. They just keep losing money. And then you're, you're seeing the pendulum swing to the other direction. So understand that there's a base to, to what that stock is. Um, and that's, that's the core that I kind of base a lot of my trading around is like, is this something that I really want to pay for? Right. And then if you're trading, understand why you're trading. So I know Jeremy and a lot of the beginner courses and, and when he was going through it, I'm like, yeah, this, this makes a lot of sense. It's, he was talking about gaps, who's getting, who's getting burned, who's, who's feeling a certain way as soon as that, that market bell opens because they're either gaining a lot of money, losing a lot of money. 
And then once you understand like, okay, they're feeling this way because they're, they're, they bought the stock in hopes it would do X, Y, Z, and it's not. Now you're kind of taking advantage of a lot of the emotions that, that people have and people still are acting on emotions and it's just human habit, I think more than anything, but they're acting on, on emotions as opposed to, to looking at the common themselves down, looking at the value, really understanding what the plan was of why they got in the first place. And you're able to capitalize on that. So I, I think understanding that it's you're trading a physical asset and then also understanding kind of the psyche of, of who else is involved in that trade and, and how they feel on a certain day. I think that would be the basics I would be looking for to, to really understand how to at least get grounded in the market. Mm -hmm. So I guess what I'm understanding from what you're saying is that if somebody wanted to get started in trading right now, they need to start with understanding the terms because there's some massive terms, recognizing that the market is emotional because there's people that are involved in it. So it's important to start to understand sentiment. And that's before you even start to pick up a strategy. Am I getting you? Is that yes. pretty much succinct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So that's pretty straightforward. Where do you recommend getting some of this education? I've tried everything. <laughs> so I'm a good person to ask for this question, right? Okay. I was, when I started trading, it, there was no online courses. It was very, you had to really, if you, if you wanted to learn, you had to put the extra effort in just to go to a place to, to find a place to learn. So I was, I was getting books. I was looking at actual physical drawings of candles on on things on understanding how they move why they move and I, I, that's where i started i think right now technology is so easy to access there's a ton of youtube videos there's a ton of other gurus in the market there's a ton of all these people especially now i mean we're, we're at higher levels of the amount of even just retail traders than ever before mm. Um, maybe minus 2020. I think some of the, some of them probably dipped down, but we're still within the last five, 10 years, much, much higher. Mm -hmm. So there's literally information everywhere. And what I would say is take all of it with a grain of salt, right? Because you don't know who that person that you're getting the advice is, is actually, you don't know if he makes a dollar a year or if he makes a million dollars a year using a strategy. You don't know if you just put a video together and now you're just trading something that he's never even back traded or tried or never, never accessed. The other thing too, is if you're watching multiple videos, the one person talking about their strategy might work great for them. Right. And now you watch another guy that has a strategy that works great for them. And then you start combining different strategies, different elements, and it's just not working. Right. Mm -hmm. I personally, and, and it's not because I'm with real life trading, but I personally like real life trading as content. Because to me, I was that person getting information from the book, from a website, from a video, from a friend or wherever. I was that person and it was just, it was just, okay, good day, bad day, bad month, bad month, bad month, and good month, oh, great trade, bad trade, next, it was just all over the place. There was no consistency. And I think for traders, it doesn't matter if you win or lose, you, you need the consistency, right? Because if even if you're cons a consistent loser, that's easy to turn that to a consistent winner, mm -hmm. right? Because you, you, you're you able to follow a certain process. Real life trading has the beginner course, intermediate, advanced. And then from that point, we have additional, like all access pass, what you guys are, are listening to now. We have different other mentorship groups. We have other courses to really start to build and enhance a lot of the, what we've already learned and now implement it into real market and try to take the information and, and now mix it with our own personal emotion and just kind of, put out a, sol a solid product. So I like the fluency of a lot of how real life trading teaches those, those courses. Mm -hmm. Right. No, I, I would agree with you in real life trading. I mean, it was a game changer for me personally, but I've learned a lot from books. I've learned a lot from mentors. I've learned a lot from videos. There's a multitude of different places that you can go to. I've taken courses. I've, like I said, I've read books, but the biggest learner has actually been taking that information, putting it into action, and then seeing if it works or doesn't work. So I've tested that. I just don't take it for granted. I don't take it um, blindly. Anything that I do read and learn, I go and I back trade and I test it and I I practice it. So obviously, if you're new to trading, you'll have to get to a place where you even know how to do any of those things. Um, and we've already discussed that first, you need to even understand what 
the stock market is, understand some basic terms. And then you, you need to progress into, you know, getting a broker somewhere that you can practice your trading, uh, not with real money necessarily. You'd probably want to try that without. And, you, you know, you can try TradingView. That's an opportunity to do some paper trading. They have paper trading accounts, that kind of thing. Um, so practice that. And then you work into getting further education from there and you just build on that. And I find that every single year I learn something different and I get better every single year. And it comes from, like I said, different sources. It could be through books. It could be through videos. It could be through mentoring. It could be through courses. And yeah, that's kind of the way that that I've been doing things as well. So uh, I, would, I would say actually what you said right there is hugely mm -hmm. important for anybody listening that maybe didn't catch it or will just overlook it is you're probably one of the few, I don't know what the percentage would be, but the one of the few that actually takes a concept, a strategy, a theory, something they learn and back trades at first. Hmm. From a lot of people that I talk to and speak to, a lot of what people do is, oh, there's a cool topic. All right, let me put my money in and figure it out the hard way, right? And, and if it's a great strategy, it works for them, they're able to just jump up on the horse and ride, terrific. But a lot of times whether it's the strategy is great and then you're fighting your emotions the entire time or the strategy is garbage. Really, why are you throwing your own money that you worked for? You've traded your hours. We're talking about trading. You're, if you're going to work, you're, you're, you're just not getting paid to be there. You're getting paid. You're trading your time, your, your energy and your hours in order to get that money. Mm -hmm. So you, you're putting something invaluable that you'll never get back again for mm -hmm. the actual currency of whatever country you live in. And then from yeah. there, you can do whatever you want. Now people go to the market. They're like, oh, cool. There's a random strategy and they'll throw actual real money into it. And, and you're like, why? Do you right. not value your time or money? There's another component I think that you're kind of pressing on right now. And that has to do with actually knowing yourself. And that's really important if you're just starting out as a trader as well. Because, you know, some of these strategies, they may be good, they may not be garbage, but they may not work for you. And that could come down to the type of person that you are. So some strategies are really conducive to holding for a long period of time. Uh, some strategies are really conducive for waiting and being patient. Some strategies are really conducive to, to uh, scalping. And depending on the type of individual that you are, uh, that can play into whether or not that strategy is going to work for you or not. And that's one of the reasons that I test out strategies because I know the kind of person that I am and I see other people maybe making money with certain strategies, but it doesn't work for me. Well, I know why, because I don't, I, I'm not that kind of person. I can't scalp or I can't do this or it doesn't fit with my personality properly. There's another component and how many of you have heard of, you know, the early adopter or uh, late adopter or, you know, you're waiting for confirmation type of thing, just in general, just in, in new concepts out there, that kind of thing exists because there's individuals that would jump on board, say, um, new technology really early on before there's been any proof of concept or anything. They just hear the idea, they can visualize it, see it, and it just sounds like a great opportunity and they're in at the ground level. And then you've got others that are waiting until, you know, the general mass population has gotten involved in it. And then they're finally ready to say, okay, well, maybe this is the case. Maybe this is where I'm going to jump in. And trading is no different. There's individuals that need more confirmation than others. There's some that are early adopters. And I have a tendency of being an early adopter. So I get... I see price when it gets down into certain levels and I want to get in early. I want to get in before I start to see confirmation. So certain strategies don't work well with who I am because a lot some of these strategies are waiting for too much confirmation. They're too late in the move. And for me, at that point, I recognize that I start to hesitate. I start to not want to get into the trade because I feel like I've missed the move already. And that strategy doesn't work because I'm not able to confidently execute the the rules of that strategy because of the location that I'm getting in or getting out. And that creates conflict for me as a trader. So understanding who you are and how you operate and what you feel comfortable with is a real key component to successful trading. So keep that in mind when you're 
looking to dive into this, when you're looking to investigate whether or not trading is for you. And if you're struggling right now, maybe you need to take a look at, at what you're using for a strategy and who you are as a person. And is it a right match? Because I tell you, even as individuals, we're all lovable in one way or another, but you put two of us together sometimes and we're not a good mix. And it's just about finding the right match, right? So, yeah. Uh, like yeah. Would, yeah. would you say for, for people that are considering thinking, possibly um, interested in learning, what what are some of the skills? Let's go with this. Do you have to be good at math or great at math to be a very good trader? No, I don't think you need to be good at math. I think that you need to be adequate at math. And if you're not adequate at math, you have to at least be able to learn how to use some tools that are there that can do the math for you. So um, it helps to understand the math behind it so that, you know, like anything, it helps to understand what you're doing, understand the reasons why you're doing it. Um, but no, I mean, second grade math, as Jeremy always puts it, I think he puts it se second grade math. He might even say first grade math. I'm not sure, but it's uh, it's basic math. If you know how to add and subtract, you maybe divide, you can do that. So <laughs> Rock, Rock says, oh, oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, I see that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no. Do you, would you also in the same element, would you say that you have to be passionate about trading? I don't necessarily think that you have to be passionate about trading. I think that you have to be passionate about the reason why you're trading. And if you're passionate about the reason why you're trading, then that would be enough, I, I think. But you have to have some like for it because if you don't have some like for it, you're not going to get up and do it. And it's just, it's one of those things because it's a self-employment, right? And if you don't have somebody that's going to fire you or hold you accountable, you have to do that yourself. So there has to be um, enough enjoyment out of it. But do you have to be passionate about it? I don't necessarily think that you have to. Yeah, I, I would say... That's a really good point. Um, I would, I would personally, I, I like the fact that you said you have to be passionate about the why. I, I think mm -hmm. you don't have to be passionate about trading. I think it immensely helps. Mm -hmm. But I think if your passion for the why outweighs the, the tool or the journey to get to your why, I think that's enough to keep you going, keep you in the game. Um, I don't, I, I like for people that run marathons. Right. They're they're envisioning themselves standing at the finish line already completing that marathon. I've never talked to a runner that actually is excited to run or enjoy is, is, is the weirdest concept to me. Right. So I and I used to do track in high school. And then uh, uh whatever time we wrapped up, like 5 p.m., all the sports teams were done. You got the late bus home. And I was on the bus and I was talking to a one of the guys from the football team, and he's like, Oh, you do track. I'm like, Yeah, he's like, Why? And I'm like, What do you mean? He's like well, in football, our least favorite part of football is when we have to run and we're doing sprints and running. That's your entire sport that you chose to do. You chose the worst thing to do. And I kind of thought about that. I was like, yeah, that's, that is kind of true. But if your why outweighs what you do to get to the reasons why you're doing anything in the first place, you can have the passion to still be successful, in my opinion, to, to trade. That being said, I, I also think it makes it easier to really start to enjoy. And I, I don't think somebody has to be passionate right out of the gate. I think it's something that you do learn to love once you start to understand something better. Like, like sure. anything, the more you understand it, the more you comprehend something, the more you, you just, you're engulfed in it. You, you, you can't wait for the market to open the next day. Weekends suck all of a sudden. You're like, I don't Saturday, Sunday, what am I going to do now? Crypto, crypto trading. I guess that's why it's there. <laughs> And as you find success, you'll, I mean, obviously when people are successful, it's something that brings them a little bit more joy, but you just brought something up that's interesting as well. And that has to do with passion because you could be over passionate to the point where it can affect other areas of your life. And even a football player, you know, or a marathoner that loves marathoning, that loves running. Uh, I don't know that they're really passionate about the actual running part. It's the other aspect of it that they're passionate about. Maybe it's a healthy living. Maybe it's about achieving massive goals, going through and and doing things that they they're pushing their body beyond the limits that they thought they could do. That's what they're passionate about. And what they're using is a marathon just as a tool to get that passion met, right? And trading, because I love trading. I would say that I am very passionate about it, but I have to recognize that that passion can lead me to be an over 
um, I could be a workaholic at times. So I need to rein that back so that the other things that are in my life can remain in balance. Because as soon as that balance starts to take a dive, that becomes a limiting factor. And that can also in fact impact your, your person as a trader, your finances, your health, your wealth, your mindset, all of that. Yeah. A tradeaholic. Exactly. And that can, and I'm not an over trader. I don't over trade, but it's uh, it's one of those things that I would much rather be day trading. There's a t-shirt that I have. It says, I'd much rather be day trading. And I, uh, I, I need to recognize that because I am still passionate about my family. I'm passionate about my friends. I'm passionate about other things as well. And I don't want to get stuck just focusing on trading because it can be a little bit um, enticing. Because like I said, I am passionate about it. I love what I do, right? Yeah, I, I yeah. agree. Yeah, I agree. And, and, yeah. and honestly, I can be, whether I'm on the mic live during the, the trading sessions, I'm off the, I, I could listen to Johnny, Tony, Maloney, you, Jeremy, when he's on the mic, Matt, like I'll, I'll just, I'm just like, oh man, I can't wait to see like what other people, just, even if I am doing something completely different, I'll still have everybody on because I'm, I'm just so enthralled with just even seeing a different aspect of the market than I, mm -hmm. than I personally might think. Right. And it could be, something that we could be talking about a setup I already know. And just the one little tweak that I could pick up during a session is, is great. Like, I, I love that. I'm like, Oh yeah. I wonder, I wonder how that works. Okay. And then I'm, I'm, then I'm back trading and things like that. I'm mentor groups. I love doing mentor groups because now market's closed and I get to still talk about the stock market. And I, and some of you guys in the chat have been in, in some of my mentor groups. I'll see people from day one. Right. And just, mm -hmm. just seeing the progress during the eight weeks of a trader is incredible. Right? Is. And I'm like, wow, there's number one. Now there's other people passionate about the stock market too, that I could talk to all the time. And cause I can't talk to my friends. They don't, <laughs> well, I, I don't have friends to be honest, but if I did, they probably wouldn't like the stock market is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, mm. I, you, you have to, I, I think, I think having the passion for the market really, really helps or, or passion for anything that you're doing yeah. really helps to, to keep it going. Yeah, for sure. Now, anyone that's starting, there's one other aspect that you need to consider and that's risk. Trading has risks that are associated with it. And I believe that that's one of the first things that you need to learn how to control when you get into trading. Because I think it's the one thing that most companies out there, most videos don't discuss is risk management. And that's one of the things that attracted me to real life trading right off the bat. It was the only place that I found risk management was actually taught. So knowing that risk is, a, is part of the game, understanding how to control it, control your size, all of those types of things is really crucial and important. So make sure that you understand that if you're going to dive into the world of trading. All right. Understanding risk is an absolute game changer. Oh yeah. Uh, you, you could be slinging stocks all day and lots of thousand shares and hundred shares and 3 million shares. And you're like, Oh, there it goes. And you're up, you're down, your account's fluctuating. It's, it's, it's a thrill for sure. But at the end of the day, it's the quickest way to blow up your account and, if, if your if your goal is to be a consistently profitable trader, first first rule for me is just don't blow up the account, right? And if you could control risk, you could really control not blowing up the account and growing it at an expected rate, right? You could, mm -hmm. I um I know for me, I, I sat down, I heard Maloney uh, when she came in on Tuesday, the open market, she's like, oh, I set goals for myself, I I broke it down, I I, I feel like I, there's a goal I could achieve of how much money I want to make, and I'm like, shoot, I did the same thing, like I I I, I don't know if you did the same thing, but it's when you control risk, you can kind of understand, okay, well, now I know how much money is on each trade. I know how much R's I was making or, or risk unit for people that don't know R's, how much risk unit I was making on, on trades that I took throughout the course of the 12 months last month. I know I go back in the trading and you just kind of review what you did and understanding that you can kind of predict like, okay, well, if, if I just traded a little bit more or I had a bigger R, which I could do because the account is bigger. And it, you could actually make it into something that's not just thin air and you're, you're able to really visualize and, and really give it a, a, a full aspect of what trading actually is and what it could do. And once you start envisioning that, trading, just it's a lot more fun. It's a lot more consistent. And you're, you're making moves because you're supposed to be making moves at that point as opposed to just flying in the wind. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Dan, we are out of time, but 
Before we end the show, I just want to say for season three, I'm super glad to be back. Glad to be back with you. And uh, for all our listeners out there, season three, we are now recording live in our all access pass um, room on Thursdays between uh, what what time is it between I'm four East, I'm Western four, four 30, four, four 30, four, four to four 30. Okay. Between four to four 30 Eastern time. And if you want to be part of the live audience, check out real and look for the all access pass. That's how you'd find us. Otherwise we will catch you next week. See you guys later. Um, 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 um.